The bees are dying, but it's not as bad as you think. It's worse. There is a worldwide crisis regarding bees. Here in Australia, we aren't excluded from that. The bee population is declining like never before. And the fact is, if we lose them, we may lose our lives. Despite their small size, bees are incredibly critical creatures. Much of the fresh produce on supermarket shelves is pollinated by them, over one third. And if we lose bees, we'll lose all of that. And that's only what's just directly affected. Much of the meats are also affected because the food used to feed them is pollinated by, you guessed it, bees. However, there are some people who are trying to stop this global crisis from bringing us to an end. There are a lot more local honey producers and beekeepers than you would first think. In fact, they're everywhere. There's a variety of different types of businesses that are involved with keeping bees and selling honey as well as organisations that are fighting for the bees by spreading education about their importance and trying to halt, or at the very least, slow the decline of the population of bees. A notable figure in this field is the Save the Bees Project, who offer much information and resources, not only about how bees work, but what we can do to save them. Ben's Bees is a company located in Blackburn North, Melbourne, who are responsible for tending to over 500 hives scattered throughout Victoria. We spoke to one of their employees, Peter Rowland, to better our knowledge about bees and beekeeping and find out more Australia-specific issues regarding their health. What would you say is like the biggest threat to bees in Australia? Wax moth and hive beetles were the two biggest things. Anyone that keeps bees in Australia has got them, had them, seen them, been affected by them. What do you consider to be a threat to beekeeping? Importation. You've got a lot of foreign honey that comes in. It's basically corn syrup, not honey. They literally do feed just mounds of sugar to bees um, in Argentina and China. However, the declining bee population isn't the only issue contributing to this crisis. Unfortunately, our honey market is riddled with fake and adulterated honey, often incorrectly labelled as 100% pure Australian honey, or saying that they use Australian honey when available. Companies exploit bees to get honey that they contaminate so much that by the time it gets into your shopping basket, it's not actually honey anymore. Some of these companies also dilute their honeys with waters and additional sugars like corn syrup, glucose and rice-based sugars, which changes the perception of what normal honey is. The sugar goes in the bee and back out of the bee, but it's Obviously, it's not nectar that's going in. Raw honey will crystallise if you leave it long enough. Then you warm it up and it'll, yeah. Vanessa is one of the two founders of the Melbourne-based business, Rooftop Honey, where her and her husband, Matt, tend to beehives on the roof spaces of cafes, restaurants, hotels and individuals' gardens. Well, one thing you can look out for things like, like you said, crystallisation. So most honeys will crystallise over winter. So you're looking for honey that not picture perfect, I suppose, and clear in winter time. A lot of the honey from large manufacturers has been pasteurized so it's been heat treated and as a result that helps with the long term clearness on the shelf but it actually makes that product dead product so it just makes it kind of like sugar in a way. So while the product you're receiving is from bees it's not really honey. That's how the big brands are able to get away with such low prices of honey because it doesn't take nearly as much money to produce this fake honey. It's also why these ruddy honeys never crystallize as natural honey should. In fact, so many people are used to this sort of honey not crystallizing that when they finally do get real raw honey, they are confused and often annoyed that it crystallizes and doesn't squeeze. 
In fact, when honey comes from a package with a squeeze top, it's almost a sure giveaway sign that it is not real ethical honey. The difference between exploiting bees and making honey ethically is how much you make and the environment that they live in. Bees can produce upwards of 45 kilograms of excess honey each year. Brands that exploit bees take more than what the bees can handle, whereas ethical brands take what's only not necessary to the bees to live. And our local honey producers are just trying to make an honest dollar are really feeling the pressure by having to try and match the impossible prices set by the unethical honey brands. But these brands will never match the product or quality of actual honey. That's why we need to cleanse our shelves of mass-produced, rip-off, low-quality honey and replace it with local, ethically produced quality honey. With all this in mind, it's important to do your bit at home. You can spend a few extra bucks when purchasing honey. You can plant bee-friendly flowers in your garden. You can go to farmer's markets and buy local and don't use pesticides in your garden. The best, easiest, and most beneficial thing you can do to help save the bees is educate yourself and your friends. It's not hard to take some time to educate yourself by watching some documentaries and taking even just a small interest in not only their future, but yours.